Guys, every time we review a cordless battery nail, the debate starts, right? Battery-operated nailers are not new anymore, and they're getting better and better with each iteration. I will say that until about a year ago or so, I was a complete skeptic of battery nailers. Um, the, problem, the problem was that they were basically heavy, bulky, and they didn't have enough power for toe nailing penetration. They sucked at that. Uh, we took a look at the Milwaukee M18 Fuel 18 gauge Brad Nailer. It's model 2746-20. And this is Milwaukee's Generation 2 revamp, or what they call in the tool business, Gen 2. Let's discuss why we needed a Gen 2, because the Gen 1 had some problems. The earlier Gen 1 had several negative user feedback issues that resulted in a complete back to the drawing board approach from Milwaukee. We also reviewed the earlier Gen 1 and we mentioned a bunch of issues needing improvement. And well, Milwaukee started from scratch with a larger design team, basically set out to address all of the issues and, and feedback issues. So some of those things were with the Gen 1 was there was like a double strike mark. Uh, oversized holes in the material. The, the, the nose was bulky and we had pr problems, problems with the sight lines. There was excessive recoil and inconsistent toenailing. Sound familiar? So what's new with the Gen 2? Well, the Gen 2 made nine significant improvements over the Gen 1. More power, lower tank PSI. The earlier Gen 1 was powerful and that resulted in too much recoil and it had more pressure than was needed to properly drive nails and that resulted in way too much recoil. The excessive recoil sometimes made the nail a jump and slip off the nail head. And that basically resulted in an oversized hole or what looked like a double striker mark. Uh, so to address this, Milwaukee reduced the energy output, recently basically the PSI in the tank, and that's gonna reduce the wear and tear on the tool in the long run, but also less jumping of the tool on the material. Smaller fastener hole, less recoil, that's a win. Um, this tool has an inner cylinder with nitrogen air spring mechanism. It's a piston and an outer cylinder. And the area between those two cylinders is where the nitrogen lives and they specify certain PSI. So Milwaukee chose to use nitrogen over air because it's less like it, likely to result in condensation and corrosion of that tank. The, re um, the reason the Brad nailer can fire so quickly is because the striker is always pulled back and ready to go in that tank. Once the trigger is pulled, the, the pressure in the tank fires the striker and piston forward to sink the nail. Once the firing sequence is completed, a motor spins a rack and pinion system, and that ratchets back and resets the firing pin. All right, what else did they do? They moved um, the depth adjustment. The Gen 1 depth adjustment was on the left side, interfered with user line of sight, was a problem. Milwaukee moved the adjustment from the left to the right, and they recessed it a bit. And this immediately improved the nailer's line of sight, at least for 85% of the population, right-handed users. Um, but the recessing of the depth adjustment further improved the line of sight for lefties as well. So don't, don't get scared. Um, the tool itself is more compact. The Gen 1 nailer, um, we, had, we noticed it had a really bulky nose and it was difficult to get into corners and tight spaces. Milwaukee significantly reduced the weight by one pound and the size of the Gen 2 nailer, making it more compact, lighter, and better accessible with an improved line of sight. Um, also, this reduction, this compact size stuff, made it much easier to toenail. Um, they adjusted and changed out the contact bracket, the tip. The Gen 1, when we tested it, it was 3 sixteenths of an inch off center um, on the model that we tested, and it was a lot of play in that bracket. Milwaukee improved the contact bracket by reducing that play or wobble, call it whatever you want, and that improved fastener placement accuracy. I was able to place fasteners spot on, and they basically just, they solved the issue. Um, the tool can now comes with three contact tips, interchangeable contact tips that actually store on the magazine of the tool. There's a general purpose tip, a small tip, which I really liked, useful for profiles and molding, and a wing tip. Wing tip basically gives you more surface area to actuate the tool and is less likely to mar the wood and leave a little impression on softwoods. Also allows you profile no, um, nailing and able to get in certain angles you might not normally be able to. Um, they changed the angle of the battery. The battery orientation is angled. You can now sit it, the tool straight up on a battery pack. They relocated and enlarged 
the belt hook. Um, it's relocated to the front bottom battery area of the tool, enlarged it for, um, it obviously has better balance where its location is, but also it can hook easier now on tool belts. They increased runtime. That's a win. Um, they found that when they reduced the PSI in the cylinder tank, the, the, the tool drew less battery, uh, less energy off the two amp hour battery. And that's gonna result in more runtime. For example, the Gen 1 installed 1200 fasteners on a two amp hour battery charge. Gen 2 does 1500, gives you 300 more. The magazine itself holds at 110 nails and a fastener range from 5 eighths to 2 and an eighth inch. Thermal overload, let's talk about that. That was a big deal. So some of the improvements on the thermal overload protection, um, the Gen 1 hit thermal overload between 100 and 150 fasteners when it was continued fires, uh, fire, fired continuously. The Gen 2 will not hit uh, thermal overload until 700 to 2,000 nails, depending on your rate of fastening, whether you're doing three to four nails per second versus one nail a second continuously. Um, job users, job site users, you should never find yourself hitting that thermal protection now at this point. Um, and look, while speed is fun to talk about and show on videos and stuff, um, and maybe an interest to production trim carpenters, the real test on the job site is fastener holes, depth of fastener, line of sight, and doing quality work. So I, I don't get all hung up on this rapid fire stuff. Um, they changed the power switch. The power switch, if you remember, um, it's on the lower area of the tool near the battery and it needed to be pressed um, for a couple seconds to turn the tool on. That's still accurate. Two seconds to turn the tool on and the Gen 1, it was five to seven holding that button in to turn the tool off and that was annoying as hell. So the Gen 2 turns the unit off now in two seconds, way better. Um, the tool itself will power off in 60 minutes of inactivity, which is great. Um, still has the LED power indicator lights that stay on the entire time the tool is powered, so you know if that tool is live. Um, and look, we took this Gen 2 to the job site. We used it. We installed 2-inch brads, 18-gauge brads into base trim, uh, molding, casing, and crown molding. Uh, we then took it to the shop here, and we did some specific, more um, endurance-type testing. Um, clean, consistent holes. Really nice. The most impressive thing, how fast this nailer installs brads. When using the nailer, one big difference from the Gen 1 is how smooth it is. And that's, that just means lack of recoil, I think, and lighter. Um, there's a marked improvement or reduction in the hole left by the nail and striker, which is important. And lastly, Milwaukee reduced the weight and narrowed the front of this tool. And it really does, you'd have a much better improved line of sight. Uh, you can see your work surface and you can get into those corners and tight spots. Um, I guess overall, the Gen 2 nailer, it nailed consistently at the desired uh, depth that we set it at. Um, it performed flawlessly on the job site, no jammed or misfired nails. Uh, we immediately noticed the zero ramp up time of the nailer, meaning that it, the tool does not pause to recharge itself. It places a nail as fast as I was able to accurately aim, set, and pull the trigger. And that's it. It's really that fast. And I could just keep doing that as fast as I can. The recoil is definitely smoother. I said that already. Um, look, we've been using this for a few days now on the job site, actually more than a week now, and we've had negative issues. Um, and in here, we tested it with oak, maple, poplar, plywood, cedar, spruce, uh, lumber, and the results were the same. We had consistent depth. We had fast fastening with no jams. Um, and really nice holes, that's important. Milwaukee took their time redesigning this Gen 2 and it shows. We didn't ex uh, experience any jams in our testing. And if you did get a jam, it's easy to clear. You just basically unlatch the jam latch at the top of the clip. You let the magazine down and open up, it's easy, toolless. Um, as far as power actuated nailing, um, it operates in, in single sequential action as well as bump fire. Um, you can fire three to four nails a second, it is fast. Um, we fired it in both modes, and I, yeah, I was impressed with the speed. I mean, it's just you're you're able to install those fasteners super fast. I don't nail like that on a job site. I actually just pull the trigger once and set the nail move. As I mentioned before, the depth of drive adjustment has a new location. It's easy to operate and dial in, and it just rotates in. Um, there is a dry lock, dry lockout uh, when you get to four or five nails um, at. 5.3 pounds, this is not a light nail. It's certainly not as light as my pneumatic, and it's um, 
but it's pretty fairly well balanced. It measures like five and a half inches by 11 by 10. It's way bigger than my pneumatic brad nailer. Let's, I'll say that. Um, you can buy the Gen 2 as a bare tool. It's gonna be 279 kitted. It'll be 399, it'll come with a battery. Um, Gen 2 nailer by Milwaukee, they got this one right. They fixed it. We haven't found any room to improve on this nail yet, um, unless they continue to reduce the weight and size. Having a battery-operated brad nailer on a battery platform that we use just makes sense to us. Not having to worry about setup, a compressor, a hose, dealing with gas cartridges like we, when we use pass load, um, fuel levels, gas cartridges, costs, all that stuff is a plus. The most impressive feature of this brad nailer is the rate of firing. And again, I was able to install fasteners at a decent rate of work with no disrupt disruption to my workflow. And like I said, I was skeptical at first of cordless battery nailers, but that's changed. We're currently using cordless battery only nailers 80% of the time on our remodeling jobs. The Gen 2 Brad Nailer, it's a nice tool that you should look at. And guys, the Toolbox Buzz crew and I, we're gonna take this nailer, this Brad Nailer, and we're gonna pit it up against the DeWalt, Metabo, HPT, Rigid, and Makita in a head-to-head -head real soon. Should be fun, I can't wait to do it. And guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give us a thumbs up and please consider subscribing. We need your support. I'm Rob Robillard, and we'll see you next time here at Toolbox Buzz.